Hi, I'm Wendy Blum, Executive Director of Lowell Telecommunications Corporation. And we're here today to give you a tour of the three potential sites for a new high school in Lowell. And I'm here today with Rick Underwood, um, who's going to explain the pros and cons of each site. So thank you so much, Rick, for coming. You're very welcome. So again, my name is Rick Underwood. I'm the Director of Facilities for Lowell Public Schools. And I'm also on the new high school building committee. And I'm um, here today to give you a walk through the, the potential site for the new Lowell High School. And where are we now? We're at the Wayne School, behind the Wayne School, in the Pawtucket Memorial at one of the parks. Uh, we're currently sitting on a park that's owned by the city of Lowell that consists of about 14.7 uh, acres. And that uh, is one of the few sites that is city owned that gives us enough room to actually um, build a new high school on this spot. Okay, well, what, what actually are the streets here? This is West Meadow Road. Okay, and what are, what are the uh, pros and cons of, of this well, site? Well, the pros and cons of this site is, one, it's, it has the, enough land for us to do what we need to do. Uh, when, you, when you look at a new high school, not only are we looking at uh, what we need for the building, but we have parking issues that we have to, and I think the, one of the, the things that we we're talking about, we needed almost seven acres of surface parking for the new high school. So that limits the uh, available space that we actually have to, to look for these places. Okay. The benefit of this space is that we, we lower the cost of building on a new site rather than renovation of the old site. Um, a couple of the other the benefits of this particular site would be uh, proximity to the middle school. It, it kind of set up a campus type atmosphere, on-site parking, um, so which, which is really big. I mean, so you know, like again, there's not a lot of space in the city. You have a city of 110,000 people. You would expect there to be multiple sites that would be used, but when you look at it in reality, there's very few sites in the city that's owned by the city that has 17, 14 uh, plus acres. We had it downtown and it's, it, in its area that it's in now, a lot of the infrastructure is already set up. You have public transportation, you have parking, you, and one of the big things is you have your utilities already set up at, in the downtown area. Anything that we had to do here, would, we'd have to bring in all our utilities. And the utilities, uh, when you talk about reimbursement from the state, they're capped at 8% of the overall project plan. So when you have to bring in all of your utilities and all of your infrastructure, you know, to start a one, a lot of that is not reimbursable. So that's that that'd be a big downfall to this particular area. Okay, where should we go next? Okay, so from here we're gonna go over to the Cauley Stadium and we'll take a look at that and then from there we'll go over to the high school at the existing site. Okay, all let's right? go. Excellent. As you know, this is Cauley Stadium. This is home to all of the low high school ball fields and football fields and um, a historic Cauley Stadium. The pros to this particular site would be that we have, on, we have usable, buildable space owned by the city. We have a close proximity to our baseball fields to give us that campus style um, atmosphere. We have the benefit of going, building new construction compared to renovation, which in turn gives us the, the idea that we'll have a more sufficient and, and, and energy efficient building. Um, so, so those are some of the big uh, pros to this particular site. Some of the disadvantages to this site is we'd lose some of our ball fields, which is one of the reasons that this makes it so attractive anyway. Because to get the necessary parking and green space that we need, some of these, these fields that are on this side would probably have to go. Um, one of the other uh, cons to this is in the proposed uh, plan, some of the parking would have to be negotiated with Tewksbury. So those are, those are some of the pros and cons to this spot. And, uh, and that's because um, actually the design takes in part of Tewksbury's property. It does, it does. So it's right to, on the to line. To get adequate parking. And uh, one of the other cons to this would be you'd have to bring all the infrastructure and the utilities in here. Um, so, you know, that'd be a, 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 an added cost where you might not so if we had it downtown because all of our utilities are there um, in parking and whatnot. Some of the other cons to this would be the proximity to services, bus routes, you know, downtown we have the kids there, here everyone would have to be bussed up, so that adds an added cost to it. And, and one of the other big things is when we build off-site, we, we're restricted by the MSBA guidelines, which uh, some of those would be the auditorium that we have at the high school, it has a 1,500-seat 15, auditorium. Uh, 
they limit that to I think six or seven hundred I think it might be at, at a max 750 seat so we'd lose that we'd also would not be able to uh, be reimbursed for the pool uh, so some of those things are the cons to this site um, and again does, does the present high school have a pool it does have a pool oh, okay. it has a, has a pool now um, it, that's that's a big part of their athletic um, structure that they have there is the pool you know, oh, they have okay. a, uh, so so no. they'd want to build one here also we would but that would not be reimbursable so it doesn't mean we wouldn't have one it would just mean it would be put on the backs of the taxpayers how many students are at the high school 3400 students okay yep. so that's a big school it's actually the second largest high school in the state oh, i think yeah. we're second to brockton really so and, and that alone it, you know it, it it makes it more complicated you know if you're building you know many many cities of this size have uh, multiple high schools and you know it, the having to renovate one or build a new high school is uh, much different than the, the the scenario we have here in the city of Lowell. Anything else about this site? No, not, you know nothing other than what you see right here. But it, it would make a you know it would make a nice site. Um, again, pros and cons to both sites. Yeah. Uh, great downtown atmosphere. We have everything we had need. We have the services. We have the parking. Um, well, we'll talk about so that when we get there. There you go. All the good things there about that go. place. Yeah. So now we're at the high school site. Oh, yeah. um, are they thinking that they would actually tear down the new part of the building? Well, there's, there's several different scenarios in included. One of them would be to knock this down. One would be to try to, to incorporate the, the dentist's office through aqua, you know, by buying it. Um, the other one would be a total renovation. So there's several different scenarios at this school. There's as many pros here as there are cons. I mean, some of the pros are the proximity to the school, to the walking distance, and the bus routes. Uh, the proximity is to the parking that we have already close by. You know, we have the parking garage here. We have, um, you know, a lot of the things that I was talking about earlier before about the reimbursable uh, uh, items that we have in the school that we would not be able to recoup unless we paid for another uh, the tax levy. Um, and that, some, would, that wouldn't be applicable here. R right. Yeah. Uh, s some of the um, the disadvantages of this school is the limited buildable space that we have here. We're looking at six six acres here. Um, and one of the other big, big issues with this school is uh, relocating the kids during construction. So we estimate that there's probably a third of the kids um, that would have to be housed temporarily, whether it be through existing spaces um, somewhere else or possibly portable classrooms. Uh, uh, going back to the pros, uh, we have the, the close proximity to the colleges. We have UMass Lowell right around the corner. We have Middlesex Community College right around. Those are all big, you know, when you're looking at a high school, having a college that close by is, you know, it's an added, um, you know, yeah, uh, benefit. Thing, right to yeah. us. It's usually more expensive to, to renovate. In this case, it would definitely be more expensive because, you know, you'd have to incorporate that housing uh, cost to the, to the students. Uh, but you'd also save on the parking, on the busing, on the stuff. So, we, we, you know, it's really not for me to say what would be cheapest or more expensive because those numbers really won't come in until um, another couple of weeks. Um, so we'll get the final cost from Sainska um, and Eastman's Perkins, who's the uh, design uh, contractor for the building. We're almost certain that the 22 building, which is over in Kirk Street side in the Colburn Hall, which uh, was built in 1831, it was actually the first um, um, co-ed school built in the country Ooh. so that's historic and there's nothing we could you know nobody's ever going to change that and that that building stays the way it is uh, of course the renovation on the inside would take place uh, one of the other uh, cons to the renovation at this building would dealing with buildings that old you know you're gonna have environmental issues there's gonna be some lead there might be some asbestos and stuff like that so that adds to the cost so you know on the things we save we spend so I mean like I said there's as many pros here as there are cons but um, you know it's a great it's a great spot for for high school um, being so close to everything um, that the downside is we don't we're not very close to our athletic fields and facilities so if the building were here and, and you were going to keep the old building too would they would they keep the the walkways across the canal? Yeah, one of the proposals from there was to keep the walkway, not only keep the walkways, but add another walk hat walk, and then uh, possibly even put a second tier on them to uh, take away from the congestions going through those. Because if you've ever been in the high school at the change of bells, it's incredibly difficult to navigate your way through those tunnels with all the kids coming through. So it's been an ongoing you know, issue with the, with the students here and trying to get to class in time. So uh, 
they decided that it would be in their best interest to either add another tunnel or at the very least add a second floor to each one of those habit trails coming across. So, Great. yeah. Whichever route we go, I'm, I'm confident with the, the uh, design team in, in Sainska, our OPM, that uh, wherever we go, it'll, it'll be a beautiful building and it'll be a beautiful high school that, that all the citizens will be proud to be part of. So, right. you know, I'm pretty confident in that. Well, thank you so much for giving us the tour. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Yeah, it was okay. my pleasure.